This podcast is brought to you by Proton Dealership IT, the cybersecurity and IT experts committed to keeping your dealership safe from cyber attacks. To learn more about how to better protect your dealership, go to info.protontechs.com slash fish. That's I-N-F-O dot P-R-O-T-O-N-T-E-C-H-S dot com slash P-H-I-S-H. Want to dive deeper into the topics you hear about on Daily Drive? We're offering listeners a special offer, 20% off a one-year Automotive News digital subscription. That gets you access to all of our news, information, and analysis made for automotive industry leaders like you. Go to autonews.com slash daily drive promo to redeem. Welcome to Daily Drive for Friday, October 20th, 2023. I'm Jamie Butters, Executive Editor of Automotive News here in Detroit. And I'm Kellen Walker in Las Vegas. Today on the show, GM makes a new offer to the UAW as the Detroit 3 lay off more workers. Elon Musk's gloomy mood on Tesla's earnings triggers stock downgrades. And Toyota will adopt Tesla's EV charging standard by 2025. Plus, we'll look at how modern retail is creating opportunities to sell more dealership finance and insurance products. It also is about being able to give that customer as much of that, I want to say, perceived power of their deal. Being able to go through and really make a lot of those decisions while it's still being kind of controlled by the dealership. Let's run through all the news you need to know to keep up in the auto industry. General Motors says it has proposed raising top wages for UAW members to more than $40 per hour by 2027 and substantial improvements on other issues as it aims to end the strike now entering its sixth week. The offer matches the 23% raises that Ford had already proposed. Meanwhile, the Detroit Three are laying off more workers in Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana as the ripple effects of the UAW's ongoing strike continue to spread. Stellantis said yesterday that it will temporarily idle 100 more UAW members at the Toledo Machining Plant in Ohio, effective Monday. Workers there supply components for Jeeps built at the nearby Toledo Assembly Complex, which has been down since the strike started on September 15th. The automaker has laid off more than 1,500 employees because of the work stoppage. Earlier yesterday, General Motors announced seven layoffs at its Parma Metal Center in Ohio and 13 at its Marion Metal Center in Indiana, bringing the company's total to 2,350. Ford said this week it was laying off 150 more workers at its Sterling Axle plant. The suburban Detroit facility supplies the Kentucky truck plant in Louisville, where workers have been on strike since last week. The latest announcement brings the total number of layoffs at Ford to about 2,700. That's the most among the Detroit Three. And a couple more ripple effects. Stellantis announced today that it's pulling out of the upcoming SEMA Expo in Las Vegas and the Los Angeles Auto Show. The automaker announced earlier this week that it was pulling out of CES in January, citing the UAW strike and cost concerns. UAW members at ZF Group's Tuscaloosa, Alabama Axle Factory have ratified a new contract with the German supplier. That ends a nearly month-long strike that once threatened nearby Mercedes-Benz production. Workers are expected back on the job Sunday and Monday. According to the union, the new contract between ZF and the UAW will end a tiered wage system at the factory by the contract's end on October 17, 2027. It says ZF plant wages will rise to $23 an hour by the end of the contract, representing a 13% increase for Tier 1 employees and 22% for Tier 2 workers. Among other things, the new contract also makes preferred provider organization health plans available to all workers and adds Juneteenth as a paid holiday. As we reported yesterday on the show, Elon Musk is in a pessimistic mood about the state of the economy, particularly high interest rates. Now, his concerns have analysts downgrading Tesla's stock. According to MarketWatch, Tesla's stock has tumbled more than 16% amid a three-day losing streak after a disappointing earnings report for the third quarter. As of recording time, the stock is heading for its worst three-day performance since last December. Wedbush lowered its price target for Tesla stock from $350 to $310 to reflect short-term worries for Tesla. And one positive note for the world's leading EV maker, 
Toyota says it has signed an agreement to adopt Tesla's electric vehicle charging technology from 2025. Toyota is the world's largest automaker by volume. Ford, General Motors, and Nissan are among the other automakers that have adopted Tesla's North American charging standard. The moves take Tesla's superchargers closer to becoming the industry standard at the expense of the rival combined charging system, or CCS. The Japanese automaker will incorporate the NAX ports into certain Toyota and Lexus CVs, including the new Toyota crossover that will be assembled at its manufacturing plant in Kentucky. And those are today's headlines. Jamie, the Detroit Three are laying off more workers due to the strike. What are your thoughts on the strike's ripple effect? Yeah, you know, the longer it lasts and the more facilities it covers, the more these ripple effects are going to grow. Uh, we're seeing this now with Stellantis pulling out of some events and, of course, uh, more layoffs at more facilities around the country. You know, we'll see what happens next. Uh, there has not been an expansion of the strike since Wednesday, October 11th, when Sean Fain added Ford's Kentucky truck plant. He is scheduled to give another update this afternoon. Last week, he said he wasn't going to do any more uh, Friday deadlines. Who knows what will happen today, but maybe they're close to a deal or maybe we see another expansion. We'll wait and see. Coming up, modern retail is changing the way dealerships sell their F&I products. We'll hear more about it next on Daily Drive. The auto industry's shift to carbon neutrality is here and it's accelerating. But is it enough? This is a moral imperative, an economic imperative, a moment of peril, but also a moment of extraordinary possibilities. No more hesitancy, no more excuses, no more waiting for the others to move first. There is simply no more time for that. Driving to Zero is a new podcast series from Automotive News that looks at the auto industry's roadmap to carbon neutrality. We take a big picture look at the environmental, political, and social trends pushing the move toward a greener future. And we pull back the curtain on how these decisions are being made at the highest levels. I said, you know, the, the headline that you need is, is GM believes in an all electric future. And I think Dan Ammon and Mary Barra pretty much said the same thing, which is, is like, but, but we, we don't. Spoiler alert, they came around to that idea. Find out how and much more. I'm Jake Neer. Join me and Automotive News Executive Editor Jamie Butters on Driving to Zero, available now wherever you get your podcasts. Email phishing happens every day. Cyber criminals are out to trick your employees and coworkers into handing over valuable information that can compromise your dealership through impersonations, fake giveaways, and urgent emergency requests. All it takes is one click to shut down everything. Phishing is the leading cybersecurity concern for dealerships. Without the proper training and protection, your business is left vulnerable to ever-evolving attacks. One day you click an email, and the next thing you know, you get a call from your IT guy. Your email has been compromised, shut down immediately. Stories of attacks and their consequences come flooding in every day. And all it takes is one click to shut down your dealership. You have enough to worry about as it is, don't add getting hacked to the list. Let Proton Dealership IT help ensure you are fully protected and learn how at info.protontext.com slash fish. That's I-N-F-O dot P-R-O-T-O-N-T-E-C-H-S dot com slash P-H-I-S-H. Welcome back to Daily Drive. I'm Jamie Butters with Kellen Walker. More and more car shoppers want a digital retail experience, but some dealership finance and insurance managers fear online platforms will cut into revenue. Jason Swick doesn't agree. He's the product marketing manager for F&I at CDK Global. Swick says their data shows F&I sales increase by 15% if customers understand the value. Swick spoke with Automotive News Senior Editor Dan Schein about how modern retail can be a boon for F&I offices. Jason, great to have you with us. Thanks for joining me on this F&I Friday edition of Daily Drive. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Uh, so we had a great uh, guest column uh, in Automotive News not that long ago talking about kind of it's becoming like this age old problem, uh, it seems like with F&I. One of my other hats here at Automotive News is service and parts. And so we spent a lot of time talking about the shortage of automotive technicians and F&I, which is another hat I wear, 
there's a lot of talk now about you know this digital experience and how dealerships navigate this technology and all. So we talk about an omni-channel experience, and this is you know what what customers want more and more. Define omni-channel for us all. Yeah, absolutely. So omni-channel and and really what we kind of refer to the entire process as is modern retail. And I know that that term has been used a lot nowadays, but we kind of see that as going hand in hand. And it's really all about flexibility, uh, being flexible with the customer, uh, working with them how they want to be worked with, but still having the dealership be the main part of that workflow. So it means that that customer can, yes, start online like a lot of customers, pretty much all customers do but then also be able to pick that customer up in the store and continue to work with them throughout the entire process. It also is about being able to give that customer as much of that, I wanna say perceived power of their deal, being able to go through and really make a lot of those decisions while it's still being kind of controlled by the dealership on how they wanna work with that customer and what they want that customer to be able to uh, choose. So it's about flexibility. And then the second thing, it's about interactivity. We want to make sure that the dealerships can still interact with those customers, whether they're in store or online. So being able to answer questions, request certain things from the customers, having that back and forth with the customers is is really what that's focused on. And as you know, and I know automotive is slow to change. They like to say, we, this is how we've always done it. So why would we change? But, and I think there, you know, there's a fear, right? That if if you're not in my office, I'm the F and I manager, and I don't have you sitting across the table from me, and I'm not, you know, selling my different products, then it, and I'm gonna lose out on money. You're gonna be on your website, on the website, and you're gonna be discarding. Nope, nope, don't want this, don't want this. But CDK Global, some kind of data has shown that that's really not the case. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, what we've seen is if you start that process early on with the F and I products. And, and have those online, we do see a 15% bump uh, in dealerships that do offer the products online. But I want to be clear that what we're focused on is not taking away the power from the F&I manager. We're not saying don't present the products in F&I. What we're really saying is start the process earlier, start the product education earlier, give those customers an understanding of what those products are, even if they don't choose anything online or early in the workflow. That doesn't mean that you can't present in the F&I office and at least they'll understand it. They'll know about it and they'll be able to learn more from you as an F&I manager. And you become more of that trusted source. We already see F&I managers from the data that we've collected be that trusted source. And this just enhances that overall, we believe. When you say start the process earlier, what does that look like? Is it is it? You know, I think, you know, if you go on a dealership website, it's, you know, what cars are for sale? What's the, what's the, you know, the, what the online price for a car, maybe some service and parts, coupons kind of thing. You really don't see an F&I presence on dealership website. Is that kind of where it has to start? It is where it has to start. So what I mean by that specifically is, you know, if you are, if you have that digital retailing tool, include those products in that tool specifically, make sure that they're presented, make sure that the customer can go through those. Uh, but it's, it's for the in-store process as well. Uh, when that customer comes in, you know, start training your salespeople. And this, this is why I think F&I managers and dealerships have that hesitation is I don't want my salesperson presenting these products. They don't know these products, but if we can train those salespeople is to have those high level conversations, then again, it just enhances that trust when you get into the F&I office to kind of do that presentation and, and still be able to, to sell it. So yeah, it's definitely about having that presence online, but it's also about having that presence in the in-store workflow as well. And I think I've seen, you know heard conversations too about, you know again, the dealerships that really kind of get it and, and have a, a good robust website is have maybe little short videos on different products. you know. Again, I'm immersed in F and I in my daily life here. But I mean, I recently, you know, bought a car and I was in an F and I office, and he's telling me all these different products, and I was like, okay, well, I, what's that again? And yeah. I think you know, a good a good website has little videos that can explain here's what this is and here's why it may be beneficial to you. Do you see a lot of that in on those websites? Absolutely, videos, brochures, things that explain the products in depth to the customers, because that's. I mean, if you think about everything that we do as consumers on online today, everybody researches through and through for products that they are interested in, right? So if we just put online a, a vehicle service contract or a maintenance program or a tire and wheel, and we don't explain it and we don't give them the tools to do that research on our website, 
obviously that customer is probably going to bypass that section very quickly because they don't even understand the value of it. So yeah, having videos from the provider where I've seen dealerships make their own videos uh, to be a little bit more personalized, uh, definitely having brochures. So they have that understanding. And that's what I mean by that product education earlier on. Uh, it's not just about presenting the products earlier on. It's about educating a little bit about those products. So again, not necessarily that you're going to make that sale online or make that sale through the salesperson, but you're building that that whole process all the way to F&I where they can talk about it in depth. And again, it's all getting to that point where nobody wants to wait and spend three hours at a dealership. It's just, it's torturous. And I know, you know, CDK Global does a great, you know, friction point study. I think the most recent one, 65% of people said they waited 45 minutes, you know, or more. This is, again, this goes back to customer satisfaction and customer service. And if you're able to, again, like you said, you know, present the stuff early and then it makes it, you know, once you get in the office, a much quicker process, customers are happier, right? Absolutely. And that's really what we're focused on. Now, I know we're talking about a lot of the F&I products today, but it's the entire workflow altogether. It's the documents you're collecting, making sure those get into F&I. It's the documents you're signing earlier in the process that are maybe non-financial documents. It's everything you do throughout the entire process. You want to get that into F&I uh, so that we cut down on that time. And products is a big part of that. If I know and understand what you're talking about as an F&I manager for a maintenance program or a tire and wheel, it's going to be in a lot faster process in the F&I office than I'm trying to learn it right off the bat after, you know, maybe an hour or two in the dealership and I want to just go and drive my new car. Now I have a little, a little bit more understanding. So it's a lot faster. So an educated customer leads to a successful F&I experience and, and a profitable one too uh, you know, for, for a dealership. Absolutely. Like I said, we see that 15% bump, but I think it's going to get larger and larger as we bring those products forward. I, you know, I always, uh, being in the industry for so many years, one of the things that always frustrated me as a consumer was we spend so much time negotiating and then we get in the F&I office. And the first thing is in our minds, they want to raise that monthly payment, right? Because they want to talk about these products. And even though the products are extremely valuable, that customer's mindset might not be there. Um, so again, having that product education earlier, explaining the values, you know, giving them the heads up all the way through, we think will lead to those more more profitable revenues in the F and I office as well. Well, interesting conversation, Jason. Really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Absolutely, great to talk to you. Jason Swick is the product marketing manager for F and I at CDK Global. He spoke with our own Dan Shine. That's Daily Drive for today. I'm Jamie Butters. And I'm Kellen Walker. Thanks to Automotive News Coordinating Producer Jake Neer, as well as our own Michael Martinez, Lindsey Van Hulley, Vince Bond Jr., John Irwin, and Lawrence Eilith for their reporting for today's podcast. You can get the latest news on the UAW strike, retail, and everything happening in the auto industry at autonews.com. Come back on Monday for a look at some of the tech breakthroughs that could help propel the auto industry toward a carbon-free future. If you enjoy the podcast, remember to like, leave a review, and subscribe so you never miss an episode.